What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to grow your biceps. Now as the name suggests, your biceps are composed of two heads, a short head making up the inner portion, and a long head making up the outer portion. Each of these heads crosses the elbow joint and attaches to the same insertion point on the radius, and thus performs the same two primary functions. The first is elbow flexion, which is the bending of the elbow joint, and the second is forearm supination, which is the rotation of the forearm to point your palms up. Now even though both heads utilize the exact same movement pattern, you can actually emphasize each portion by changing the angle of your shoulder, since each head of the bicep originates on different parts of the scapula. So let's take a closer look. The long head of the bicep makes up the outer portion of your upper arm, which is responsible for giving your bicep its peak. Due to its higher and more outward origin, it actually crosses over the shoulder joint. Therefore, it can be emphasized with your elbows placed behind your body, a movement known as shoulder extension. In this position, the long head is able to contribute to a much greater extent since the stretch on the muscle allows for maximal force output. To achieve this, many exercises can be employed. With the barbell, your best option is the drag curl. First, grab the barbell with an underhand grip at around shoulder width. Then, lift the bar straight up towards the ceiling, keeping it as close to your body as possible. Drive your elbows back until your forearms are parallel to the ground, then slowly lower the bar back down. Next, with dumbbells, is the incline curl. Lie back onto a bench, placing your head against the top. Then, roll your shoulders back, puff out your chest, and curl the weight up to your armpits while keeping your elbows locked in place. Squeeze at the top and slowly lower the dumbbells down. Finally, with cables, is the Bayesian cable curl. Adjust the height of the cable to lower the hook down and attach a handle to the machine. Then, with your shoulder extended behind you, drag the weight up to your armpit while keeping your elbow locked in place and resist the weight back down by fully extending your arm. The next part of your bicep is the short head. This head makes up the inner portion of your upper arm, which is responsible for giving your bicep its width. Unlike the long head, the short head does not cross the shoulder joint. Therefore, due to its lower and more inward origin, it can be better targeted with your elbows placed in front of your body, a movement known as shoulder flexion. In this position, the short head is able to contribute to a much greater extent since the stretch of the muscle is significantly decreased, causing the tension on the long head to weaken. To achieve this, many exercises can be employed. With a barbell, your best option is the cheat curl which allows you to overload the eccentric portion of the lift. To perform this, slightly hinge your hips back and tilt your upper body forward. Then, use just enough momentum to get the weight moving by thrusting your hips and moving your torso back into an upright position. Allow your elbows to slightly drift forward in order to curl the weight to your shoulders, then slowly lower the bar back down. Another barbell option is the seated curl. This exercise is pretty much the opposite of a cheat curl, as instead of utilizing momentum to your advantage, you actually want to remove it entirely. By starting each rep from a completely dead position, the short head has to work twice as hard in order to get the weight moving. Therefore, instead of of overloading the eccentric portion of the lift, you're able to overload the concentric portion. So to perform this, sit on a bench with a barbell resting on your thighs and curl the weight up to your shoulders, allowing your elbows to drift slightly forward. Next, with dumbbells, your best bet is the preacher curl. Now this can also be performed on a machine, but for the sake of convenience, I'll demonstrate on a bench. First, place your armpit on the top of the bench with your shoulder locked in place and your other hand on the side. Then, curl the weight up by bending your arm and turning your pinky outward while keeping your elbow on the bench. Make sure to keep your shoulder locked in place and fully contract your bicep at the top before slowly lowering the weight back down. Another great option is the spider curl. Now this can also be performed with a barbell, but I find that dumbbells give a much better contraction. To perform this, place your chest on the end of an inclined bench and plant your feet firmly into the ground. Then hold the weight below you so that your arms are vertical and curl the weight straight up towards your chin. Finally, with cables is the kneeling cable curl. Adjust the height of the cable to lower the hook down and attach a handle to the machine. Then place one knee on the ground with your elbow resting on the other one. From here, grab the handle and curl the weight towards your face until your bicep is fully contracted, then squeeze at the top and slowly resist the weight forward. And with that, we've explained the functions of the bicep, including how to emphasize each head and the exercises you can perform to do so. But before we end the video there, I want to let you in on another way you can grow your biceps, and that is by training the brachialis. The brachialis is a small muscle that lies underneath your bicep, which contributes to the overall width of your upper arm. Even though it's not technically part of your bicep, it will affect its appearance since growing this muscle will push your biceps outwards. And similar to the bicep, the brachialis also performs elbow flexion, so it's already heavily involved in most curl variations. Despite this, the brachialis cannot assist with supination. Therefore, it's much better emphasized with an overhand or a neutral grip as opposed to an underhand one. A couple of my favorite exercises that utilize this are hammer curls and reverse curls. Both of these exercises can be performed with dumbbells, however hammer curls can also be performed with a rope attachment on a cable machine, and reverse curls can be performed with a barbell or a curl attachment. So even though I'll demonstrate each with dumbbells, just be aware that you have other options if you wish. To perform a hammer curl, grab a pair of dumbbells with a neutral grip so that your palms face inward. Then, curl the weight up to your chest by bending your elbows while keeping them locked by your side and slowly control the weight down. And for reverse curls, simply utilize this exact same technique, except instead of utilizing a neutral grip, employ an overhand one. And don't be afraid to initiate slight wrist flexion where your knuckles point down if that's more comfortable for you. So as you can see, there's many different exercises to choose from in order to grow your biceps. But just keep in mind, no matter which one you choose, as long as you're performing elbow flexion, the long head, short head, and brachialis will all contribute just to a different extent. Now you might be wondering, why haven't I mentioned anything about grip width? And the truth is, there just isn't enough evidence to prove it makes a difference. 
difference. Despite this, many believe that using a narrow grip produces a better contraction in the long head, as a closer grip places your shoulders in internal rotation, shifting the tension towards the outer portion of your upper arm. However, doing this makes it much more difficult to supinate your forearms, meaning that you have to actively think of turning your pinkies outward to keep the tension on your biceps. And although this may be beneficial for improving wrist mobility and grip strength, it doesn't necessarily have the same effect on your biceps. Likewise, many believe that using a wide grip produces a better contraction in the short head, as a wider grip places your shoulders in external rotation, shifting the tension towards the inner portion of your upper arm. And even though this may be more comfortable for your forearms, it actually reduces the range of motion, which can limit the biceps involvement during the exercise. And since the evidence behind both of these techniques isn't exactly concrete, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing either unless you're limited on equipment or you want to try something new for your forearms. That being said, in order to get the most out of your bicep training, it's important to choose exercises at varying degrees of shoulder elevation to ensure that you're maximizing each muscle to its potential. I recommend choosing one exercise where your shoulder is flexed and your elbows are in front of you to bias the short head, one where your shoulder is extended and your elbows are behind you to bias the long head, and one with a neutral or pronated grip where your elbows are beside you to bias the brachialis. So for example, if you're limited to just dumbbells, you may choose incline curls, preacher curls, and hammer curls. If you only have a barbell, you can do drag curls, cheat curls, and reverse curls. Or if you want to use cables, you can do Bayesian curls, kneeling curls, and rope hammer curls. These are just a few examples. Feel free to mix it up however you like in order to choose exercises that are best for you to progressively overload. To add these to your routine, I find it best to do three to four sets for around eight to 15 reps for each exercise for a total of two to three sessions per week. And since your biceps are already involved in most pulling exercises, including pull downs and rows, it wouldn't be a bad idea to train them at the end of your pull day. That way your biceps are already warmed up and you're able to train them efficiently close to failure. And that wraps up how to grow your biceps. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed, comment what you want to see next, and subscribe for more.